Good night. Welcome to Conversation with Rickford Burke. This is Rickford Burke in New York. You know the drill. Share the link, everybody. Text me. Let me know you're watching from as well. Share the link, everybody. Far, fast, and wide. We want to have a very wide audience tonight. Um, the drama is unfolding in Guyana. The DPP has advised the police, as we all expected, not to charge the alleged child rapists in the rape scandal, where Minister of Local Government, now allegedly resigned, um, Nigel Darmlal, uh, allegedly raped a child, brutally, violently raped a school child, an underage school child from Esquibo. And now the PPP is circling the wagons around him to ensure that he's not criminally prosecuted. Share the link, everybody. This is cause to shut the country down. This is cause to shut the country down to ensure that this child receives justice. Everyone, share the link to everyone you know, at least 20 people. Again, good night. Welcome to Conversation with Richard Burke. Um, happy 4th of July for those of you living in the United States. Um, text me, let me know. <clears throat> Excuse me, let me know where you're watching from. Go to my YouTube page and subscribe, like, and follow me on both of my Facebook pages. Wherever you're watching this program right now, ensure that you like uh, the page or you follow it or you subscribe to it. Okay? Share the link, everyone. Again, text me, let me know where you're watching from. And I'll be back in six seconds. I'm seeing some of you saying good night. Roderick Henry, good night. Kim Walker, good night. Uh, Irville, good night. Minute, good night. Diane Mitchell, good night. Brooklyn in the house, good night. I'm seeing you there, Miss Joseph. Um, Leon Blair, good night. Listening from Lyndon, good night. Uh, Miss Allen from Barbados, I'm seeing you, good night. Share the link, everybody. I'll be back in 60 seconds and I'll keep telling you where you're watching from. I'll be back in six seconds.
Okay, good night again. Welcome to Conversation with Richard Burke. This is Richard here in New York. Share the link, everybody. Share this link. Get into all your all of your Guyanese groups and share the link. Um, I want to discuss this whole rape issue in Guyana. This is not even... This is not um, anything that the nation of Guyana should take lightly. This is an attempt to demonstrate East Indian, PPP East Indian superiority in Guyana. There's no question about it. This is PPP East Indian supreme, uh, superiority and supremacy in Guyana. Not even any regular, any East Indian, PPP East Indian. They want to demonstrate to the country and the world that they are superior East Indians, superior, a superior category of people who are above the law. They want to have a one-party state. And this is all being pushed by a maniac, lunatic, Hitler by the name of Barjabio. And he feels that all of his men are untouchable. Keep sharing the link, everybody. We're going to break it down here tonight. This is Barrett Jagbe demonstrating to the country and the world that he and his people are untouchable. And I maintain that when these people live office, Barrett Jagbe and his crew should not be allowed to live in Guyana. Or if they live in Guyana, they must live in jail. Simple as that. That's my view. And any government that comes into power after the PPP that does not exile these people or put all of them in jail by hook or crook does not deserve to govern. So if we have an APNU government in there again and did like what Granger did, kick them out, run them out, throw them out of government. These people are destroying the Guyanese society. They're destroying the rule of law. They're destroying democracy. They are taking a playbook from the MAGA Republicans and the KKK Jim Crows. That's it. They believe that they can brutally rape a girl, a child. Brutally rape and sodomize a child. And everybody circled the wagons against the rapist to make sure he doesn't get charged criminally. And you have the DPP, who's part of the conspiracy. And we know the conversations that that was happening in the DPP's office. Everybody share the link, please. Keep, share, keep sharing the link. Keep sharing the link. So I want to read a statement that CGID issued today. Because we saw this coming. So the headline of the statement that we issued today was Ghana Police Force and the Child Care Protection Agency reportedly badgered the victim in the Darmlal rape investigation to remove her reference to President Ali in her allegation, in the statement she made. She refused and decided not to go forward with the rape complaint because she did not want to withdraw the allegation against Damla. Sorry, but she did not withdraw her allegation against Damla. She said she didn't want to go forward with it anymore because she was frustrated. She was being badgered. This is a 16-year-old girl, as I said, on Sunday night. Adults can't withstand this kind of pressure, bombardment, harassment by police, by Child Care Protection Agency. As a matter of fact, the, 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 the agency should be named Child Care Rape Projection Agency, Protection Agency, because they were more interested in protecting the rapist, alleged rapist, than the victim. 
This is what the PUP government is all about. From henceforth tonight, the People's Progressive Party should be known as the Pedophiles and Predators Party. Y'all hear me? Everyone, make a note of it. The PPP means Predators and Pedophiles Party. I'm going to read a statement. The Caribbean Guyana Institute for Democracy has, inform has been informed that the DPP, the Guyana Police Force, and the Child Care Protection Agency wanted the underage victim in the Darmla rape investigation to remove her assertive statement in her allegation that Nigel Darmla provided her with President Irfan Ali's mobile number and coerced her to message President Ali on WhatsApp and inform him that the matter was resolved. And she did so under his direction. So she, she said that. He told her, this is President Ali's number. You message President Ali and say, this matter has been resolved. And he coached her in terms of what to say. CGID further understands that the child declined to adjust her statement to omit this or any other material fact from her statement. When badgered, tormented, and harassed to do so. So they badgered her, they tormented her, they harassed her. All hours late at night, they have been interviewing her, badgering her, waking her up interviewing her. This is common statics. And she refused. The government, this is what CGID statement says, the government and police initially directed Blossom Child Advocacy Center to conduct further interviews. So Blossom apparently is the agency that conducted the initial interviews. When the DPP sent back the statement to the police, the reason she sent it back, at least one of the reasons is, they wanted the child to take on this reference to the president. That's what we, hear, we understood. And they could deny it all they want and put out whatever statements. This is fact. The government and the police initially directed Blossom Child Care Agency, Advocacy Center, Child Advocacy Center, to conduct further interviews of the child, apparently with the intention of soliciting from her the removal of the reference to President Ali in her initial statement. Blossom, we were advised by a government source, declined to further interview the child, indicating that they had already conducted several hours of meticulous and rigorous, rigorous interviews with the child and that all possible subjects and avenues of questioning had been exhausted and that the child had provided thorough and exhaustive answers. Not satisfied with this position, with the position of Blossom that they don't need to interview the child further, the Ministry of Human Services, Child Care and Protection Agency and the Guyana Police Force contacted Child Link Child Advocacy Center to conduct, sorry, contracted, contracted child, link, child advocacy center to conduct further interviews of the child, again, with the hope of having her eliminate the reference to President Ali in her statement. It is at this point that the child asserted that she had done several interviews and had already answered the said questions that were put to her by child link. This on the age victim then complained of being under severe pressure from the continuous badgering and bombardment and questioning. She said that the onslaught of being repeatedly badgered, these are not her words, this is CGID saying what she, interpreting what she said, allegedly said, with the same questions over and over had taken a toll on her wellness. And she said she wanted to get this process with, over with and go home. She didn't want to proceed with anything. <clears throat> she wanted to go home. The, ch the child further complained that the police and child protection agency were treating her like a prisoner, denying her the right to an attorney during the questioning, 
seizing her phone and her tablet. Up to now, the police, as the latest information we have, has this girl being held in prison, in this prison-like condition. Prison. They have her in prison. Darren Lal is free. Run around the place, painting over his house, changing furniture around. And this child is virtually in prison. For telling the truth about being raped by a powerful PPP government minister. The child's reality confirmed that she's being treated like, a, like the predator. While Nigel Damlal was treated as though he's the victim. This is repugnant to the rule of law, CGID says. As the state and the police are responsible for ensuring that she received justice for being violently raped and sexually assaulted. It is clear that persons in the PP government and the Guyana police force formed a conspiracy to cover up this matter, to conduct a mediocre, sloppy investigation, to obstruct and subvert justice, and to harass and frustrate this child into submitting to Darmla's wishes that she not proceed with her criminal complaint. That's exactly what happened. And the DPP, she went right along with it because she's part of the conspiracy. CGID forcefully condemns the Ghana Police Force, the Child Care and Protection Agency, for their deceitful and unprofessional manner in which this matter is being pursued. The investigation is completely compromised. Public trust in these two institutions has been obliterated completely. The investigation is becoming more and more scandalous by day. By the day, the current police officers and child care workers assigned to this investigation should be removed. And an outside law enforcement agency like the FBI and another child care agency must be invited to assist with this investigation. The entire system of justice has failed this underage child who's obviously brave and intelligent. Obviously brave and intelligent. And is willing, she is willing to tell her story. She deserves justice. CGID continues to demand that Nigel Darmla be charged with rape and obstruction of an obstruction under the Sexual Offenses Act of 2010. That's CGID statement. What you heard in this statement is factual. It's factual. Keep sharing the link, everybody. Now, before I go into a certain part of this complaint and deal with this whole issue about President Ali's reference in this complaint, I want to go to, everybody keep sharing the link. I want to go to the law. We made a we made a post um, uh, let me let me find I want to find the law the relevant aspect of the law that governs sexual offenses. These lights are hot and I'm sweating, but this issue is more important. Um, one second, let me make a switch here so that I can, um, one second. All right, 
I think I have it. So I want to look at the law. Right. Um, all right. Let me share my screen. He's sharing the link, everybody. All right. So let's see what the law says. So this is the Sexual Offenses Act, as you can see, gazetted on the 24th of May 2020, sorry, 2010. It says, in proceedings relating to an offense under this act, a person commits the offense of obstructing the prosecution if that person prevents a child from, one, giving a statement to the police, giving evidence in any other way which would be admissible for the paper committal or from testifying. Why hasn't Dharam Lal been charged under this section of the act? The DPP doesn't need a complaint from the child of being Raped, which she has. She has the statement. She has the statement from the child that she was raped. She has other evidence. But independent of this child's complaint and independent of the child's statement that she doesn't wish to go forward with the complaint, by the way, the allegation is still there. She has not withdrawn her allegation. She said she does not want to go forward with a criminal complaint at this time. But independent of that, one, it is a fact that Darmla paid these people $10,000 to shut up. It is a fact that Darmla asked her to issue a false statement. Twice. One, at the police station in Anna Regina, in the presence of commanding officer Kemrad Shibbaran, who should also be charged jointly with him for one obstruction and two accessory after the fact. But the second statement where the second obstruction is when Daimler asked the child to issue a post, make a false post on Facebook, saying that the allegation is false and that anybody who continues to make them would be uh, sued. That payment and all of these interventions to get this child to make false statements, all of that, all of them are obstruction acts of obstruction, coercing her not to testify, not to give a statement, not to give a true statement, which is obstruction. And all of them also constitute tampering with this witness. And then he changes up his home to conceal evidence, which again is obstruction. In addition to that, he tells the child, one, to destroy her phone, two, he tells the father to destroy the child's phone, and in so doing was attempting to destroy evidence. Other also acts of obstruction. What in God's name is preventing 
the district attorney from charging him with obstruction. Why do they have this section of the act? Or is it Damiala Supreme East Indian who's above the law? PPP East Indian, who's above the law? Let me say this very frankly. If this alleged rapist was a black man, the whole law book would have been thrown at him. And all of these PPP women would be parading up and down this, the country talking about how violently this girl was raped and how criminal black people are. Let's face it. That's the PPP we're dealing with. I want to go back to the statement. Now, you would recall that in the CGID statement I read, CGID was informed by more than one source. The reason, one, the major, or one of the main reasons why the statement was sent back to the police from the DPP, they wanted that reference to the president out. So basically, the girl was badgered into discontinuing this criminal complaint because of a reference to the president. Now, let me read for you a part of her statement. Keep sharing the link, everybody. All right. There, there, are four, there are four statements. I want to read what Nam, Nigel Damlal told this child. And he was right. Right here, I'm going to read here. Let me highlight it. From right here. Nigel Damlad said, the most that can happen is that he will lose his job. But at least he will not go to jail because I decided to give a statement to the police saying that everything that is being said was not true. So he had it in him that I will not take him to court. But since I did know, I see there's something different. He's saying she's seeing everything different now. They're circling the wagons to protect this alleged rapist. And then she says this. My mother was there when I was communicating with Nigel Darmlal on the phone. And she heard, that I was, she heard what I was telling him also. She did hear when he gave me President Ali's number to WhatsApp him and message him and tell him that everything is still resolved. The message is still on my phone, which is still in police custody. So the police sees the girl phone. Not to investigate anything. She is the victim. Why the hell the police is seizing her phone? She is the damn victim. Guyanese, express your outrage so that the Guyana police force can give this girl back her phone rather than keep it and erase the evidence, because that's what they want to do. That's what the Guyana police force want to do, if they have not done it. They're going to erase the evidence from this phone. The people in the Guyana police force are criminals. 
deceitful, dishonest cops, dirty to the core. That's what they want to do with this girl's phone. Did they seize the ambulance phone? We must find that out. But she goes on to say, Nigel told me that this is the president's number and he told me to send him the message. I sent the message to President Ali and he did read it and it received two stars. You know what's up when somebody reads something, it has two ticks. That's what she's saying. The president's number is a 40 40 number, but I can't remember the first three numbers, but I know it was a 40 40 number. I did not tell Nigel Lambrow to have sexual intercourse with me. It all happened in the moment. And that was basically it. I did not consent. I never said yes to him. Nigel Damlal was the first person, blah, blah, She went on. She went on. Now, let's, let me share something else with you. So, this is what President Ali told Gordon Mosley. Year 2023. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting, and here's what we're tracking tonight. A 16-year-old schoolgirl in an open letter to the president has alleged being groomed, preyed upon, and sexually assaulted by the minister of local government, Nigel Daramlal. News source made repeated efforts to get a comment from the minister today. Both of his known numbers went to voicemail on several occasions. There are reports that the president and the minister of education have both been made aware of the allegations. A senior education official reached out to the girl today to set up a meeting with the education minister, New Source has learned. In the letter which was seen by New Source, a teenager detailed being allegedly contacted by the minister of local government via WhatsApp and Facebook and conversations taking place between the two. She also detailed meetings that allegedly took place at the minister's office and financial gifts being thrown at her by him. She also detailed being taken to the home of the minister and allegedly being forced to perform sexual acts by him and eventually being allegedly sexually assaulted by him. In the letter, she said she was raped and left feeling broken after the alleged incident at the home back in December. The teenager attached various messages from her phone and social media accounts that were allegedly sent to her by the minister. She complained of being hounded down by him repeatedly with phone calls and messages. She also said that before the alleged sexual assault, herself and other teenage girls had been warned by two other government officials about him. In a statement, President Air Finale said while he has seen the reports of the allegations, he has not received any formal complaint. However, he noted that any complaint will be fully investigated by the relevant authorities but i've seen the uh the post on facebook and everything okay. and as, as i have said to newsroom my position on the, this these matters are very clear i don't condone or tolerate any behavior like that and uh once any facts is established the uh, anyone found guilty uh of any misconduct will be held accountable but having seen the allegations, sir, um, even if a report is not made, do you intend to ask the minister to step aside to allow for a proper investigation to be done? No, but but mostly once, that's what I'm saying, once the facts is established and a report is made, then I will ha then I'll, I'll, be, I'll have to take the necessary action. But as of now, what I have is the post that all everybody has. President Thierry Finale, opposition member of parliament with responsibility for public security matters, Gita Chandan Edmund, in a statement today, said she has been left appalled by the allegations against Minister Nigel. 
That's what the president said. Again, let me read what the young lady said. Nigel gave me the president's number and told me to message the president. The, 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 the message is still in my phone, which is in police custody. Nigel Damlal told me that this is the president's number, and he told me to send him the message. I sent the message to the president, to President Ali, Orphan Ali, and he did read it and received two stars. Also, also, in a, in 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 a, the same statement, the young lady said the president had received her complaint and shared it with Nigel Damlal and the Minister of Education. That's what she said. Nigel Damlal told her that. This is also what she said when he took her to her house. He came on to me and he started kissing me. He was wearing a white shirt. I believe it was black pants. I don't recall the color of the shoes. And then he started moving, removing my top. But I was wearing one of those printed blue and white, red socks, whatever, whatever. She went on to describe what she was wearing. Wearing. She said he literally stripped me and got naked. And he was like, I want you to suck, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I'm not going to do that. And then he's like, what you mean? You ain't going to do that. And then he literally pushed me down and made me do it. He then did blah, blah, blah. And then told her, go deeper. That's when I know something here would not be nice. That's what she's telling herself. She said, how are you going to force someone to do something like this? Then he put her on the bed and have sex and blah, 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 blah. And then when she complained about pain, he told her to shut the F up. He violently raped this girl. And nobody in the PUP could condemn it. Not one so-called civilized person, not one so-called civilized woman in the PPP could condemn this. Not one. Not one. Not one person. These people eyes past the Amerindian population of Guyana. These dogs in the PPP, that's what they are. They're dogs to treat somebody's child like this. My child, damn not call it back in the society, you know. If this was my child, Nigel Darmlal would not live in Guyana. I would hunt him down. I'm a Christian, God forgive me. But when you take advantage of vulnerable people in society and then you pull all the powerful levers of the state to protect yourself, having raped, assaulted, sodomized a little child, and then they're upset with us because we're talking about it, these racists, rapists, pedophiles, and their enablers in the PPP are upset because we're talking about it and are attacking us. Man, you guys come after me. I'm ready for you guys. Come after me because I am trying to protect this child. And because all the other people who are speaking out in the Guyanese society and in the diaspora, 
are trying to protect this child and ensure that her rights are protected and she received justice. You want to come after us? Come after me. Come after me. And we will go back after you and your family. Ruthlessly. I have never seen anything like this in my life. Never. I wonder if somebody rapes the DPP's daughter, what would she do? I wonder if Dan Lal rapes the, PPP, the DPP's daughter, or God forbid, the police commissioner's daughter, or the crime chief's daughter, or one of the minister's daughters. What would they do? Protect him like they're doing now? And Barjah, this document, let the process work. Let the process work. Let the process work. Yeah. And then to demonstrate his power, he throws them $10 million and tell them, take the, and write a statement saying this never happened. And then on top of that, break up your phone and throw it away so you could. No evidence must be left. The father didn't do it. The girl didn't do it. He got the police to take away the phone. And on top of that, they kidnapped this child. The government of Guyana abducted this child and they're holding her in prison. She's virtually in a prison. No communication with a lawyer. They questioned her. I'm not even sure how that could be constitutional. And then they're hiding under the statute where on, in such cases, the child should be protected. And as far as I'm concerned, the intent of that law is to protect the child from people around her who are around the child who could potentially harm the child. In this case, it is the government that is harming the child. Not the guardians, not the attorneys that they're shutting her out from, but the reason they're shutting her out from the rest of the world, they don't want her to tell her story, one. They don't want her to tell the world what they're doing to her, two. And they don't want her to get the advice of counsel, three. That's why they're holding her as though she's a prisoner. They want total control control of her to achieve what we saw tonight where the DPP under the cloak of her a child not wanting to go forward with criminal charges because they badgered, bombarded and battered her, harassed her what sort of society is this? what sort of government listen any woman who votes for the PPP again ever after this disgraces themselves. Any woman, any Guyanese, as a matter of fact, because our men in society are supposed to protect our women because they're the more vulnerable species. So any man, any woman, that votes for this particular party after today, after this incident, this graces dehumanizes themselves. And in the Amerindian community, we want to launch a project. Let us launch a project, my Amerindian friends, in every Amerindian community. Let's launch a project called Protect Our Girls. Protect Our Girls. Take this message to every house in every village in every settlement in the Amerindian population. Protect our girls. The message of how brutal the PPP has been raping and ravaging Amerindian girls throughout the country. PPP men. As a matter of fact, some of them have been raping the boys too. Print flyers. All of Guyana must join this. The, 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 the transportation companies, air services, all of these people that provide transportation to the Amerindian communities. Take this information 
to the people. The People's Progressive Party is a party of pedophiles and predators. Let us start this project immediately. Protect our girls. And also, civil society, women's organization, former police officers, former defense officers should launch a mission to go into all of these Amerindian communities and receive the complaints and take statements from complainants. Amerindian leaders in Region 9 and 1 sent us 28 instances where they reported their girls, young on the age girls were raped and nothing happened, nothing. Raped by PPP officials, the mayor of Letem, member of parliament of Region 9, chairman of Region 1, regional executive officer, community development officers, two ministers of government. Nothing has happened. Where is the conscience of the nation? Where is the conscience of the nation? Where are all these women who are parading up and down in 2020 talking about protection of democracy? You got human lives to protect. You have the dignity and decency of young girls to protect. Where are you now? Where are the women in the PPP? Priya Manichan, Vidya Pasad, Sonia Prag, Prag, Sujan Rodriguez, Onish Waldron. You guys don't have any decency? You sit silently while one of your colleagues have allegedly brutally raped and sodomized a child? And then you want to come out and lecture people? Especially Priya Manichan. Especially Priya Manichan. She want to use people's kids as political and public relations props. And now one of those kids have been allegedly raped brutally. She said she bled and Priya Manichan is silent. Instead, they circled the wagons around the rapists, alleged rapists. Came down on her like a ton of bricks, badgered her, harassed her, bombarded her, until she said she felt it was affecting her wellness. She wants to go home. She wants to be let loose from prison. She wants her phone back. This is what the PPP has done to the Guyanese society, the party of pedophiles and predators. The People's Progressive Party, from hence, as I said, should be renamed Predators and Pedophiles, Predators and Pedophiles Party. Let them go contest the elections like that, in that name, because that's who they are. And the DPP, and the DPP, they're complaining. I'm getting messages here. They're complaining about my video. If you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen, PPP supporters. Don't complain to Facebook about the video. Complain to the DPP who's refusing to prosecute a rapist who has raped a child. That's who you should complain about. Don't complain because we're condemning it. If Daramla was a black man, so help me God, she would have thrown the books at him. She wouldn't have any worry about the president, reference to the president. She wouldn't have any worry about that at all. All she wanted to know is that there's a black man who she must destroy. And she would have thrown the book at him. The DPP is part of the problem. This is why the justice system in Guyana is rotten. Rotten to the core. All of them are failures. 
undermining justice in the country. She's a minister of justice. She is a minister of justice. She can't even charge the man with obstruction. A basic obstruction charge. She can't do that. East Indian superior, superiority, supremacy. And then tonight, so as to make it look like there conse there's consequence, they just announced, well, Daramlal has resigned. They still don't have the decency to fire the man. Just to show the nation, well, we take some kind of action. They can't even fire the, uh, the alleged rapists. You got to resign. And let me tell you this. Dahmulal, resigning is a formality. He's going to get his same pension. If possible, he can still be in parliament. He can still get the bodyguard, still in the government house, still get taxpayers benefits. And they're going to put him in another posh office equivalent to the same senior minister and pay him. He is not going anywhere. That's how contemptuous the PPP is of the Guyanese people. That's how contemptuous they are of this child that he allegedly raped. That's how contemptuous they are of the people of Region 2. That's how contemptuous they are of the Amerindian community. Like I said as I wrap up, this is no joke. This begins a new chapter of resistance against the PPP government. This is the beginning of the campaign to get rid of these people, the party of predators and pedophiles. And if you elect them, they're going to rape the whole country, of the, all the young girls in the country. That's their mission. Thief money, rape little girls. Thief money, rape little girls. That's their mission. And the women would sit there and condone it, just like they condoned Kwame McCoy when he assaulted an opposition member of parliament. Just like they condoned Dam Lal when he told them a member of parliament, go and get dildo. He's a maniac. And all of them in the PP who sit and tolerate him and defend him, they're just as gross and sleazy as he is, all of them in the cabinet, to sit there with such a sleaze and condone and cover and defend him. It is abominable, abominable. So as I close, I want to ask everybody, let us carry the message in the Amerindian community, save and protect our girls. Have a good night.